James, welcome. Hi, John. Nice to see you. You're being honored this year as a BMI icon for your remarkable body of work. What does this award mean to you? This award means a lot to me. Last year when I realized that I'd been doing this for now 31 years, um, I really, I, I, I had a hard time grasping that. And to have uh, I get what, I, what really is 30 years of work recognized by uh, the organization that I started with, actually. I was a BMI writer as far back as, gosh, I think sometime in the 70s. Um, I foolishly left for a, for a short period of time, but, but rushed right back. And so, uh, you know, it, it's, um, it, it's a great honor, and it, it just kind of runs concurrently with a lot of the feelings that I have about how lucky I've been and, and, and how much I'm enjoying my career, even 30 years into it. What role has BMI played in your career? Well, you know, I mean, listen, working with Doreen is really a, a unique and wonderful experience. I mean, Doreen is really, is, is unlike anybody in that position, she's really a champion of film composers and film music, and having that connection and support um, on both a personal level and on a corporate business level is, is really meaningful. They're really a, a force in my life in, in lots of different ways, not just politically and, and socially, but also certainly financially and looking after the business interests of composers. I mean, that's a really big deal. You've scored more than 125 films over the past 30 years, and you're obviously much in demand. How do you generally begin? Do story and character play a role in deciding your approach? Sure. I mean, um, you know, usually it begins obviously a conversation with director and reading a script or some kind of uh, exchange of information about what the project is. And then I have learned that one of the most productive things I can do is just to start writing music without the film. And just to, and I tell young composers this all the time turn off the movie and just start writing music because that's really the first order of business is to write some music and not get hung up with the architecture of trying to synchronize the music to the picture too early. So what I try and do is, is turn off all the images and just let my subconscious, for lack of a better word, and I come out and I just spend time writing things that on some level I sense might have to do with the movie. And then I find that if I put up some of that material thematic, particularly against the movie, a lot of the time it ends up working. You know, you have done films in every genre. When you think about the difference between Pretty Woman and King Kong, to what do you owe your versatility? Um, uh, you know, I, I think that's kind of the name of the, the job. Um, I've, I, I've always enjoyed putting myself, not always enjoyed, but I've, I've forced myself to get into situations that make me uncomfortable. And that has always presented a challenge to me to try and rise to the occasion and write whatever kind of music uh, that I need to write at that particular time. I've also surrounded myself with people who are much more talented than I am um, in terms of some orchestrators and people that have advised me in, in specific genres of writing that have really educated me uh, to a great extent. One of your key collaborators over the years has been uh, director M. Night Shyamalan. Pictures like The Sixth Sense and The Village Tell us about that relationship and if it differs from how you've worked with other directors. Well, Knight and I have, you know, we've been through tremendous heights and some, some not so tremendous heights together, but it's a deep friendship and, and a wonderful collaboration and one's, one that means a, a, a huge amount to me. I think one of the first things that happened when I did The Sixth Sense is when my score didn't get nominated, Knight called me up and said, well, you re the reason you didn't get nominated, I'd already been nominated a few times before about different things, was because the score didn't have a singular quality to it, that it didn't have really necessarily a life beyond the movie. And I took a little bit of, took me back a little bit and I thought about it and in a way, he, whether you get nominated or not has nothing to do with that and who cares. But what really matters is that I, the, the words that registered with me were singular and a life beyond the movie. And at that point, I started writing a lot more. Uh, I changed the way I wrote in a funny way. Uh, I started writing more efficiently, economically. I tried not to be, write so pianistically. I wanted, to, I wanted to use a minimum of ideas throughout a score, reduce it to the simplest, most profound and um, articulate expression, if that makes any sense. And I started to write music before the shooting would begin. And I really started doing that process with Knight. In fact, Signs was the first one 
where I wrote the main title, what turned out to be the main theme of Signs before he started shooting the movie. And that whole process has been incredibly valuable to me in my growth as a composer, I feel. That exchange with Knight, um, he was very demanding, but it's always been a very close friendship. Before you became a full-time film composer, you worked as a musician, a songwriter, a producer with, with many artists. Elton John, Diana Ross, Carly Simon, Ringo Starr, Barbra Streisand, Randy Newman. It's a pretty impressive list. Were a few of those collaborations special for you? They were all special. Elton, you know, that, my relationship with Elton John was really what put me on the map in lots of ways. And, and learned, learning from his generosity, not just as a, uh, a human being, which is legendary, but as a musician and, and his readiness to afford me any kind of musical opportunity that I wanted to try. Um, specifically writing his orchestrations when I first joined the band and trying in some way to, to fill the shoes of one of the legendary orchestrators of all time, Paul Buckmaster, which I never did, but I, but I had the shot a number of times because of Elton's generosity. Barbara, working with Barbara was an extraordinary experience. Uh, she's an incredible artist, and I think that was the first time that I started writing multiple versions of the same cue which is now is just standard, standard procedure. And I think working with Barbara raised my work ethic to a very much higher degree. And I'm always grateful for that. Randy, being, just being in the presence of Randy Newman, hugely thrilling and, and also became one of my dear friends. So yeah, they're all special.